As a quick catch up to where we are, the United Methodist Church is planning to split. The worldwide denomination voted in February 2019 to keep the wording in the Book of Discipline that calls the practice of homosexuality incompatible with Christian teaching. The vote was 53 to 47 percent, and it's only because of the non-U.S. congregations, mostly in Africa, that the vote went that way. The majority of U.S. delegates voted for plans that would remove the wording. As I mentioned in my last video on this topic, just announced the Global Methodist Church Church. The plan is now for the conservatives to exit, and a major player in this has been the Wesleyan Covenant Association. On March 1st, 2021, they announced that as soon as the door was opened, they would launch a new denomination, the Global Methodist Church. The UMC has canceled in-person general conferences in 2020 and 2021, and the WCA wanted to get things figured out as soon as possible. And there have been churches from all sides of the debate who have decided not to wait. Bering Memorial Church in Houston voted 95% in favor to leave the UMC in April 2021, stating the United Methodist Church has been discriminating against the LGBTQ plus community for 49 years and continues to do so in the Book of Discipline. In May 2021, the traditionalist 2000 member Christ United Methodist Church in Illinois departed and paid an undisclosed sum to the annual conference to keep the property of their four campuses. In November 2021, a group of UMC pastors created a call to grace.com where they posted a statement calling on the UMC to not keep kicking the can down the road and instead allow churches to exit the UMC in a gracious exit immediately without having to negotiate over property. They stated that due to COVID-19, it appears likely that the general conference scheduled for August through September 2022 may be postponed again. The call has gone unaccepted and the general conference is still scheduled for this fall. However, if it does end up being postponed, a call to grace may find more people willing to sign their statement. There's a weariness in both sides remaining uncomfortably tied together, as hinted at in the A Call to Grace statement. We call the church to a pastoral response to the anxiety generated by having to delay decisions that impact people's lives and ministries. Meanwhile, the efforts to launch the GMC continue. On January 11, 2022, the Global Methodist Church Twitter account posted this tweet. The Transitional Leadership Council anticipates that the GMC will be formally launched in September 2022. Until that time, the GMC is a church in formation. It looks forward with great anticipation to the day when the people of many local churches can join once it is formally launched. The plan is then, after forming, for the Global Methodist Church to continue under its transitional book of doctrine and discipline for about one year and have their own convening general conference in 2023. The WCA also decided to do their part to allay COVID-19 fears going into this fall's planned conference. On January 7, 2022, they presented their plan to ensure general conference delegates from Africa, Europe, Eurasia, and the Philippines are fully vaccinated against the COVID virus by paying for the cost of immunization. They stated that, Total funding to ensure all delegates who desire to be vaccinated have access to immunization is estimated to be $135,000, and they encourage people across the spectrum to donate to support this cause. Surprisingly, a liberal UMC group called Reconciling Ministries Network shot down the idea, stating on Twitter, RMN does not endorse the WCA's efforts, which appear to be driven by their desire to separate from the UMC. They also posted a response attached to the tweet, which said in part, While seemingly noble on its surface, the WCA's plan to vaccinate only United Methodist delegates in a wide landscape of inequitable vaccine access would only exacerbate divisions of class, tribe, ethnicity, and more. Hand selecting a small number of individuals to be vaccinated while those delegates, communities, and families continue to wait for vaccine access would serve the WCA in their desire to hold a general conference as soon as possible. It perpetuates colonialism by the U.S. Church and would come at the detriment of those communities and families affected. At the same time the Wesleyan Covenant Association is working to get the global Methodist Church off the ground, another Methodist denomination and formation is reconsidering. In late 2020, I reported on the formation of a new Methodist denomination on the progressive side, the Liberation Methodist Connection. Since that announcement, they have had some struggles. In a blog post in December 2021, they stated, immediately after the launch, the LMX attempted to handle unexpected, complex challenges in ways that distracted from our primary purpose for weeks, exhausting us and leading to some internal distrust. Since February, some working group meetings struggled with attendance as common ground in conversations on foundational documents was not reached. No new collaborators were in 
introduced, seemingly due to a lack of agreement about how to best integrate new people. Other sticky points for us have been concerns about whether our BIPOC collaborators are being treated well, whether we are prioritizing dismantling white culture in the LMX over creating a space for queer people, whether the LMX should be a traditional Christian denomination or other, whether the historic roles of clergy, laity, are liberative, and whether we should continue to define what our community should be, and ultimately what the LMX should be before opening our doors to more people. After that explanation of their internal struggles, the blog post continued with how things are looking for them in the future. As we stepped back and took a wider view of where we were having the most trouble, one unforeseen issue is that we were mostly unprepared for what it looks like practically to build something new, particularly as a volunteer group without the resources of our old denominations. Common ground was easier to find when we were focused on critiquing old institutions. It has been much harder to find as we all bring ideas about what can be. We realized that we made many assumptions about the goals of our fellow collaborators. We now believe that in spite of what we may hope to be in the future, we must be honest about where we are now. We are a small group of unpaid volunteers with limited resources. Positioning ourselves against the United Methodist Church or any other spiritual institution does not serve us and it is an unfair burden to place on ourselves. We simply do not have the structure or resources to do that at this time. Some may fairly say we move too fast with trying to be a denomination. Others say these are the unavoidable growing pains of building something that you've never built before. Either way, we were forced to reevaluate what we are doing and what we are building. So it seems that the LMX is not quite as ready for formation into a formal denomination as the GMC is. There's been a growing tension, though, over what will really happen in the 2022 conference. For the WCA and forming GMC, there's really one main goal, and that is the protocol for reconciliation and grace through separation being passed. This protocol, designed with full endorsement and participation from people on both sides of the issue would allow churches to leave the UMC and form new denominations with a gracious exit. No fighting over property. A few other things worth mentioning are, number one, that there is a dedicated movement to discourage moderate or conservative UMC churches from leaving the UMC and joining the GMC. The North Alabama Conference of the UMC is more conservative than most, and there are people working to get the conference to join the GMC when it forms, which would require a 57% vote in favor. A website titled New Methodist Movement has appeared, curated by several North Alabama UMC pastors, which is encouraging the conference to join the GMC. And a separate website called Stay UMC is trying to convince churches not to do so. Number two, if the protocol does pass and denominations are able to form, the process of regional conferences voting to leave may or may not happen quickly. It could be that some call special conferences to vote to exit, but others may wait until their scheduled annual conferences for such a vote, pushing things into 2023. Number three, while both sides are still together, there's infighting going on and motives are being questioned when actions take place that seem more political than practical. As an example, a traditionalist UMC church that is affiliated with the Wesleyan Covenant Association, the 9,000-member Mount Bethel UMC in East Cobb, Georgia, unexpectedly had their lead pastor, Jody Ray, reassigned away from the congregation by UMC Bishop Sue Hopper Johnson. Ray and the church rebuffed the assignment and the North Georgia Conference of the UMC said they would seize the church's assets, stating that the employment, instruction, activities, and worship of the church and the school will continue, but under the direction and control of the conference board of trustees. Ray surrendered his UMC credentials, and the church announced they would attempt to exit the UMC, but they've since been hit with a lawsuit by the North Georgia Conference. Mount Bethel has responded with a countersuit. From the traditionalist side, whether accurately or not, this dispute is being used as an example of the more progressive side playing hardball and trying to break up the momentum of the WCA and strike fear into other churches that support the GMC. So a lot is in fact happening, and there's likely to be more surprises along the way. Right now, the UMC is still united, but regardless of what happens in 2022, there will be a significant number of churches leaving in one way or another. The realignment that's happened with Lutherans, Presbyterians, and Baptists is coming to the Methodists too, and now we're about to find out if it will happen smoothly or with even more of the pain that has often come when there's an exit.